Hey guys, how you doing? Today is uh, May Day. It's May 1st today. And uh, I'm going to go down into the garage and do a little work on the F20 stuff. <clears throat> um, first things first, I got some viewer mail from Gary, I believe it's Wadier. Um, I hope I'm saying that right, Gary. If not, I apologize. But he sent me um, a couple of things for the WD, the Alice WD. Uh, the first one uh, is a operating and parts manual. So that'll help us a lot when we're working on that. And then also a shop manual for the Alice. So that's awesome. Uh, we'll definitely put this stuff to good use. And uh, this must be an older INT. Definitely an older INT, which is which is awesome because it probably has more than the newer ones in it. Um, we'll definitely put this stuff to good use though. So. Um, it's always good to have the manuals for the tractors and refer to them as needed. Especially these parts manuals because it has schematics that breaks down exactly how things go together. So if you ever have any questions on on reassembling something or, or anything like that a parts manual is a huge help so just for an example you know it, it shows you how you know the full schematic of I believe this is a fan blade and water pump so it's pretty pretty detailed in outlining how things go together come apart etc so oh there's a letter in here uh, hopefully you can use these manuals. I have two of these so you can have one of them. Enjoy them and make the, it makes the tractor complete. Take care. Well again Gary, thanks a lot and make sure I didn't leave anything in here. Thanks a lot and we'll definitely use these. So it's been uh, kind of crappy weather here and I imagine and a lot of the other places in Texas and or in the in Texas. Gary lives in Texas, that's why that's on my mind, but um, a lot of other places in the country it's either hot or cold it seems like. So we've been getting rain and snow and sleet for the last uh, however many days, you know, since basically since I went and got that F twenty. So it's uh it's been kinda crappy, but uh can't really do much about it, so we're going to work in the garage and work on the cylinder head here and uh, get the valves cleaned up. There were a few stuck valves, so when I got it home, I, I sprayed everything down with lubricant. And uh, I took the cap off the magneto to take a look at that, and it actually looks pretty clean in there, so hopefully, hopefully we can get some spark out of it without doing too much. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So let's head down to the garage. All right, guys, here we are. So the inside of the head, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get a better light on it here. The inside of the head is actually not in bad shape. I think the valves are mostly just stuck, or some of them are stuck from sitting and surface rust on the stems. Number four has probably got the worst, but it's still not bad. So, I'm going to clean the whole surface up, I'm going to pull the valves out, and they're not, you know, they're not recessed into the, into the head, so the, the valve seats must be in pretty good shape. So I'm going to clean the head up, and uh, pull the valves, clean out the, the combustion chambers, or the, the valve ports with a a wire brush and a wire wheel on my drill and then I'll put the valves back in you know clean the valve stems up themselves put the valves back in and then lap them and see what we got so 
that'll be a good start. Um, one other thing, I did end up when I took this thing off, one of the one of the exhaust manifold studs must have been real close to breaking because I literally lifted up on it and it snapped. So that's kind of a a downer, but I suppose we can look inside the the ports here, and they all look pretty good. Um, like I said, number four number four exhaust is a little a little flaky, but they all look pretty good. So let's uh, first things first. Let's go ahead and pull the uh, the valves out, and uh, we'll go from there. So let me grab my valve spring compressor here. Set up the camera. My workbench is kind of full, so. I've got the, uh, the carburetor and the big needle up there, and that carburetor for this thing is pretty, pretty darn big, so... So I always try to keep everything in order. Oh, I gotta take that valve keeper out of there. That way I know, I know which valve goes where. And this valve spring compressor, I was at a uh, at a garage sale, and I spoke with a woman who was running the running the sale, and I was buying a couple things, and I asked her what she wanted for this because she had it on a table, and she said, "Oh, that thing? I don't know what that thing is. You can have it." I said, "Are you sure?" She said, "Oh yeah, just take it." So, that's where I got this valve spring compressor from. And actually, it's still, I think it's still got the free sticker on it. Yep, right there.
there's always one that kind of gives you a little bit of trouble. Back. Have to come back to that one. I don't know if you guys have heard about that or used that evapor rust rust remover stuff but if you've tried it let me know how it works because uh, I'm kind of curious curious to know about it are going to need some cleaning before we take them out even. So. And something leads me to believe that this engine has been gone through um, somewhat recently because this this valve cover gasket is actually in pretty decent shape um, it's still flexible even it's not dried out so we'll have to see I'm not sure why uh, why this spring is giving us so much trouble here. Oh, okay. I see. I see what's going on. itself was uh, already compressed on on here so springs off and uh put the clamp away here this time. Bring up some room. Yeah these valves look look pretty good actually. The stems aren't war. seats themselves are in so now I do have if I can find it here
drum so I can kind of This is kind of interesting. I've never seen uh, anything like these before. These must be like a base for the spring, and then an extra, an extra support for the Ooh, that one's a little, that one's a little worn, but. not burnt at all so could probably get by with it for quite a while Some of these need to be cleaned up a lot more than others, but uh, I still find these, these things interesting here. show you guys how I do this so I got a series of, of wire wheels and stuff for my drill and I've got a cup a larger cup style it's probably a two inch or so two inch cup then I've got a smaller cone and I've got the just uh, the edge or actual wheel style itself so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this whole surface clean up inside each of the, the valve ports a little bit try to get them as good as I can and we'll go from there so I'm gonna clean the actually uh, I'll leave the camera on here. I was gonna turn it off but this would be a good time lapse
down. This has got some kind of a tackifier on here from when they had the last head gasket installed. So I'm going to have to wipe it down with maybe some lacquer thinner. But everything seemed to clean up pretty good. Uh, looks like this, this valve seat's pretty rough, pretty pitted. Um, this one here too. This would be our number four exhaust. This would be our number two exhaust, I believe. So other than that, everything looks pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do much about these. This thing might need some machine shop work. So, we'll see. I'm going to wipe this thing down and then uh, work on cleaning up the valve. Alright guys, well, we got our valves all cleaned up. They're in uh, pretty darn good shape. I polished the valve stems and everything, so they're in pretty good shape. Um, a few of them are pitted on the top side, but the, the actual valve surface is, is still pretty good. But I'm probably going to have to take this thing to the machine shop anyways because there's some of these seats that are that are quite pitted so there's no way that lapping them I got my lapping compound out and I'm ready to start lapping on my first valve here but there's no way that lapping them is going to take care of the uh, the amount of pitting in a couple of these valve seats so it's going to have to go to the machine shop but let's go ahead and uh, lap some of these valves and uh, go from there. take a piece of fuel line that fits over the valve stem and I clamp it to the valve stem it in my hands easily. See where we're at. Gotta get my get my rag ready here. Not uh, 
the valve seat looks okay, but the uh, I think the valve surface here is pretty uh, pretty worn and pitted. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there's quite a bit of small pits in there. I don't know if grinding these valves is probably what we're going to have to do. Put these on a valve grind machine and, and grind a new angle in here or grind a new surface. But we'll keep going at it and see what we come up with and then uh, go from there. Alright guys, well we got all the valves lapped and actually they came out they came out pretty good. The uh, the valve seats came out pretty good too. So I'm thinking we might try this thing the way it is. Um, I still got to get this broken uh, head stud out or this manifold stud out, but that's not a huge deal. More than likely, I'll either drill it out and tap it, or I'll heat it with an oxyacetylene torch and then blow it out. But I'm probably no, we'll just have, we'll have to see. Um, more than likely, I'll drill and tap it just because those are the tools I've got here. But as you can see, all of our valves are free. I put uh, three and one oil on all of them just to protect them from, you know, to help them slide better um, and then to protect them from rusting in there again. So, just from sitting, I don't know when, when I'll get this thing back together. So, let's go ahead and put the valve springs back on and uh, I think that'll be it for the head for today. So. I think I got this upside down. Hold on one second here. Helps if you have the the retainer cup in the right position.
the valve is pushed all the way out. Halfway. Move the camera here. Last one. There we go. All the valves are back in. So let's go ahead and give each one of them a push and make sure they're working. Got a hammer over here with a wood hammer. Looks good. So the next things I'll probably do will be uh, flush out the coolant passages. I'll probably do that on a nice day and uh, get this uh, exhaust manifold stud here. Get that removed. So coming along, you know it's. It's not too bad. Give you guys a little quick view of the this side of it here. And I did wipe this all down with uh, lacquer thinner. So for the most part all that tacky substance came off. So. A little bit of progress, but uh, nothing major. If 
but I think this head is uh, usable. I don't see any visible cracks, so should be good to go on that one. And I think I'm going to hold off on the uh, on the magneto work today. This carburetor. I don't know if you guys can see down inside there, but it's it's pretty rusty. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking with that evapo rust. Somebody else had commented and said apple cider vinegar would work really well to take uh, take the rust off of this. Um, I don't really have any experience with that, but. Looks like the throttle shaft and the and the choke shaft are both frozen. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and you know well I'll leave this for another day, but I'm gonna probably uh order some of that evapo rust. It's not very expensive, so I figured well I might as well give it a try for what it is. So when I do get it I'll soak soak all the parts that I can in it um, and go from there so that's pretty cool there a big old part of the casting says made in United States of America gotta love it so we'll get to that later I'm just glad that we got this head cleaned up and for the most part uh, ready to go you know like I said I got to get those that broken manifold stud and then I'm going to clean it out inside so till next time guys I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks again to everybody who comments and subscribes and keeps watching and that's why I keep making these videos but anyways you guys take care, all right?